heavy men are crossing towards the centre of the ring. It's an unbelievable sight to see. They're toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The Russian towers above the American. It's a true case of David and Goliath here. It's unbelievable the, the, the condition of both men, but the... I must break you. You know what I said back there about none of you? Yeah. Forget it. That's what? So that's the enemy stance with Mr. Wayne's. He wants to break you. He wants to break your dreams. He wants to break your goals. He wants to break everything that's good in your life. And one of the ways he'll do that is through getting us to continue to stay in our dysfunction, to live in our sin, to, to even, even a lot of the things, Miss Joyce, sometimes that we've turned away from, to go back to. I don't know if you remember, Ryan, when we were talking, uh, was it last week, but the week before, when we were in, 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 our, in our third session, we were talking about a guy in, in John chapter 5 that Jesus came up to at a place called the Pool of Bethesda. And, it, and he had been there, Rick, for 38 years. 38 years caught in this dysfunction, caught in this, he, he was paralyzed by this life, and, and, and you know, we don't have time to go into all these verses right now, but, but basically when, when Jesus came up to him, he started giving him all this rationalization. Nobody would help him to the pool. Nobody would do, and, and we, we kind of catch ourselves in that sometimes. We kind of catch ourselves where, where, where we stay in a bad spot for a long time, and we make excuses that make us kind of feel better about being there. You remember, remember we talked about when, when Jesus talked to him, he, he didn't ask the guy, do you want to feel better? You remember that? Because we can come to church, Miss Barbara, we can feel better. We can surround ourselves with people that, and even some people that are in the same dysfunction as we are, and that kind of makes us feel better, doesn't it? Maybe make it some of the same mistakes that we're making, and we can feel better. Don't take what Jesus asked him is he says, do you want to get well? You've been stuck here in the same spot for 38 years. Do you want to get well? And we learned, that was when we were learning, again, how to win, the, the importance of prayer and how God answers prayer through opportunities to obey Him, right? So, in other, and that's what Jesus did. He gave Him an opportunity to obey. He said, okay, if you want to get well, Daniel, He said, get up. Get up. As He got up, as He did what God asked Him to do, what Jesus asked Him to do, he was healed. He received that healing. Now, I told you we would finish this after that sermon. Later on, Jesus came up to that guy. And he wanted to point out something really important to him. He said, be careful not to sin again, or else the, what, what you're going to end up with is going to be worse than what you came from. So Janice, it was almost like Jesus understood there was some kind of sin. There was something going on that was keeping that guy trapped. That was keeping that guy stuck. And he said, you got to be careful, man. I've set you free. I've given you life. You're not stuck by that pool anymore. You're not paralyzed anymore. You've got all this potential and all this life. Yet, you know what? The last 38 years were rough. But starting with year 39, it's brand new. But you've got to be careful that you don't go back. Everybody turn to your neighbor and say, don't go back. And you think for these big years, I wouldn't have a problem with this one. <laughs> so, so, so why is that important to God? You see, Romans chapter 6, God teaches us something really important about sin. He said the wages or the cost or the penalty, what we have to pay for sin is death. Okay, so your sin doesn't mean when you sin necessarily. There are sins that can cause you to die, Right? But it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to physically fall over dead every time you make a mistake. But what is what God, our Father, who loves us and is trying to keep us from bad things, Damon, what God is teaching us is that when we sin, it will put something good to death in our life. You know, sometimes that's the death of a relationship. How many of you guys have seen relationships fail because of a sin? Let's be honest. How many of you have seen opportunities put to death because of a sin? Lots of my life jobs that were lost because of, because of some sinful thing, right? Yeah, peace, 
How many of you guys have lost peace because of a mistake that you've made? Right? So you see, death comes, well, death comes in all different kind of forms. And that's what God doesn't want. You see, in, in, in John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus came and he said, Look, he said, Zach, he said, I've come to give you life and life more abundant. He, he's saying, Christy, he says, I want your life to rock. Abundant means running over. So much life, Mitch, that you can't hold it all in. So much life that it's just like what's happening with you guys. You guys are diving into Christ so much, you and Bree and Nick and me. There's so much cool stuff going on with these two couples. Their life is so full, it's splashing over and getting all over their dads and their moms and their families and all that stuff. That's cool, man. That's abundant life, and that's what Jesus had for us. But it's like we're robbed of that abundance. We're robbed of that new life. We're robbed of the peace that comes through that relationship with Jesus, right? When we allow sin in our life. Because it systematically puts a stop to those things by our own choice. And that's why God's called us here this morning, because he loves all of us. He loves all of us. And Miss Joyce, he sees those things that, that we've been blocking in our lives through the decisions that we're making, through the things that we're going back to, through the things that we're allowing to stay in our lives. Repent says, I'm going to turn away from that sin and I won't go back. You see, God gives us opportunities through repentance to experience abundant life, relationships, feeling better, uh, freedom, all kinds of cool stuff, relationships. But the enemy is continually trying to get us to go back from where we came from. There's so many people in this congregation that I know personally, that I've, that I've, I've had the privilege of being with you on your journey as you, as you come through some horrible things, you've turned away from things. Tell me what you've turned away from 11 years ago now, right? You've turned away from that. And look at the quality of your life. God, God finally, finally broke that chain. He, he set you free. And, and, and this is what the enemy's going to try to do. He's going to try to get you to go back. He hates, the, he hates the way your wife looks at you right now. He hates the way your grandchildren look at you. No, he, he doesn't like what you love. <laughs> but really, he hates that joy. He hates the peace. He hates the, the fact that you can look other addicts in the eye and say, through the power of Christ, you can overcome this. He hates it. And the way he can stop that, the way he can break that joy in your life, Tommy, is to get you to go back. And I need you guys to get, get things ready, please. So the devil has really two main ways that he works that out, the way he accomplishes that. The first thing he does is he works through comfort and familiarity. What you're, what you're used to. It's hard to break that, isn't it, Marianne? It's hard to break away, even though it hurts you because you're used to it, because you, there's a sense of comfort. Like the dude that was at the bank, he'd been there for 38 years. That was what his life was. That's what he was used to, right? So the devil will use that, and then he'll use what I call spiritual amnesia. And later, we've all had this, right? That's where we look back at what we used to be, the decisions we used to make, and all we remember is the cool part of the sin. We, we remember, Tommy, what we used to drink, and we remember the, the buzz and the feel good, but we don't, we get spiritual amnesia about having a toilet and putting our face where it was never intended to be. Amen? Amen. We, we get spiritual amnesia and we forget about the damage it did to our relationships. We get spiritual amnesia and think about the things that it cost us the, 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 the opportunities that we lost because of it. You kind of understand what I'm going That's what he does. He, he tries to get you to only remember the good stuff. And it, God gives us a perfect, perfect example of this in Exodus chapter 16. If you guys, uh, again, if you, if you got our app, you can go down to the very bottom of our app and click on Bible. And you can find Exodus. It's real simple. That way, if you have one of these cool actual paper Bibles... It's near the front of the Bible. It's Exodus chapter 16. And I, I want to give us, as we're looking that up, we're going to be looking at the, at the second verse of Exodus chapter 16, verse 2. A little backdrop there. So very similar situation with what we call the children of Israel. The children of Israel are the Jews that we know today, okay? And this, these were God's chosen people. And what had happened, they ended up in Egypt. And... It was a good thing at first, but then what had happened is through being there, they ended up being enslaved by the Egyptians. They were beaten, they were whipped, they were treated horribly, 
and they were they were literally slave labor building all the Egyptians, and I guess like the pyramids and all the Egyptian stuff. They were treated horribly, even under the point the Egyptians, because they began to populate, they began to multiply so quickly, they were nervous that the population of Jews was getting greater than the population of Egyptians. So they started killing their kids. This is the dysfunction that they were living in, guys. They were getting whipped, beaten, they were treated horribly, and they were killing their children. That's just some of the stuff. And they were forced into slave labor daily, 16 to 20 hours a day. And then they cried out to God, just like we do. We get caught in these, these situations. They cried out to God, and God heard them. Raised up Moses, man. Moses, he worked through Moses to do miracles to set them free, just like he's done in our life. Set us free from sin and all these problems. He got them out of there. He, he got them out of Egypt. Remember, they parted the sea, made manna rain down from heaven, made water come out of the rock, all these cool things. But as they're coming out of Egypt, and this is where I'm talking about in the middle, God took them from where they were. On the way to where he was taking them, was, was it, he was taking them to a place called the Promised Land. And guys, he's got the Promised Land for everybody in this room. Please hear me. Don't, 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 don't miss this, God. He's got a promised land for you. You're not there yet. I'm not picking on you. None of us are. He has got a promise for every one of us. A point in life. He's got blessings. He's just like in that promised land, he had provision for them. He said it was so good. The way they described the land was a land flowing with milk and honey. Did you know even to this day, Israel, like the, 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 the way that that ground is fertile, is some of the most fertile ground in the world on the planet? It was amazing. When they went in and checked it out, it took two people to carry the fruit out. There was so much fruit just to show as an example to the children of Israel what they were going into. And that's what God had for them. But, but the thing was, Dan, is they had to get there. It's a process, right? Remember, Ryan, we were talking about it in discipleship, how you know God's love is unconditional, but His promises, are, are, are they're dependent on our being willing to be a part of that process, right? And us doing our part. And that's what they were doing. They were walking towards God's promise. Now, what happened, though? They're in the wilderness, and they got hungry. And the spiritual man amnesia starts setting in. Let's read what happens here in Exodus chapter 16 and verse 2. Excuse me, verse 3. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat, and ate all the food we wanted. Okay, so they had the meal plan in Egypt. But they were whipping them every day. They were only feeding them the way because they were using them. But they didn't think about that. All they were thinking about is I'm hungry right now. And in Egypt, in my dysfunction, in that horrible place, at least I had food. Not thinking now they're free. Nobody's whipping them. Nobody's killing their children anymore. Not, not thinking about that. They got spiritual amnesia, Tony, and they forgot about all the horrible aspects of Egypt. And they're saying, man, I'd rather go back to what I'm used to. I'd rather go back to what I'm familiar with. Because they're at me. Do you, you see how crazy that is? Everybody turn to your neighbor and say, what? You got to do this with a little attitude. What were they thinking? Kind of like a mom was like, <laughs> You know why it's it's kind of like it's kind of like in our lives. You know, it's like the, <clears throat> that was their first challenge in their new life. You know, they were tempted to go back because they were hungry. And you know, it, it's the same with us. So, like for example, now maybe instead of drinking something or smoking something or taking a pill to handle a problem, now now you're trying to learn just to trust in God. And, and even though. Putting the drugs and alcohol away has already made your health better, your relationships better, giving you new hope for better jobs, other opportunities. In the challenging moments, we still want to go back. We still want to go back to Egypt. And we have to be careful about that. Even though we're familiar with it. Even though it feels comfortable. We've got to remember the destruction it's causing us. We can't get spiritual amnesia and forget what that's meaning. You see, God wants to open our eyes up this morning to all of our own spiritual amnesia, to see how crazy it would be to go back 
to our old lifestyle or to stay. If we're, if we're in one right now that's hurting us, to stay there. And 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 22, this is, this is one of Josh's favorite verses, man. This is something that really impacted him when I shared it here a while back. That's where God is telling us that he's equating going back to our sin or going back to that lifestyle. And I'm not trying to gross anybody out. This is in the Bible. But Mackenzie, he's saying it's just like a dog returning to its vomit. Now, I've got a little sermon illustration here. There's no dogs. <laughs> but Renee was told by the doctor, this is just this is a little example. Renee was told by the doctor that she, she can't eat cereal anymore. It's hurting her. She's allergic to it. It's something horrible on that cereal. She needs to eat other food because if she keeps eating cereal, it's going to kill her. It's, it's horrible. But so she so she she does the right thing, man. She puts the cereal down, she throws it away, she changes. And she leaves it behind. But you know what? That other food doesn't just doesn't taste the same as, as cereal. Not too chunky. The enemy wants to dress up your dysfunction and make it seem okay. Now, is that gross? <laughs> Jimmy's over there praising God. I didn't bring dogs in here this morning. Okay. But, and I, and I, know this is, I know this is radical, guys. I know that. But I, I need us to understand, really, I need us to open our eyes up to the real thing. Thank you, Give it a Josh, I was going to have you do a but I didn't know if you could handle the curve. In, in God's eyes, when, when he's offering us steak, and we're going back to curly milk, and then we've got to be careful that we don't go back. That's what repent means. It means I'm turning away from my sin. I'm turning away from those, those, those bad habits. I'm turning away from those things that are, that are hurting me, right? Those things that can make me sick. I'm going to stay on track. I'm going to continue trusting God. So, Life application, how do I do it? That's what Rick's wanted. He's like, okay, man, you built a good court, a, 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 a good case. Thank you so much. A good case. But how do I do it? So two, two real easy ways, guys. Number one, stay plugged into the other five. By loving God and loving others, you're going to get the strength and the support that you need to keep going. You're surrounding yourself right now. God bless you guys. You're coming to church. You're surrounding yourself with other people that are trying to keep from turning back. We're on that journey together to that promised land, right? By praying, guys, you're also going to get strength. By, by uh, reading, studying the Bible, guys, it's, God's going to be continuing to reinforce the good choices that you're making and the impact that that's going to have on your life. You've got to stay plugged in. And as you stay plugged in, guys, something magical begins to happen. We've talked about, remember the chain analogy that we use? That as we begin to make choices, good choices, pretty soon they become a habit. Pretty soon, Rick, what happens is what feels comfortable and familiar is the right thing. Does that make sense? Pretty soon you start doing the wrong thing. It doesn't feel right anymore because we made a new habit. You stay plugged in. The second thing, guys... The second thing, guys, is get a good testimony. You got to know I'm worried y'all out with my testimony. Poor David, he's, he's, he's got a silent amen going on right there. But you know what? I love continuing to remind myself so that I never get spiritual amnesia and forget where I came from. Amen. I, I will never forget what the alcohol, what, what the bad choices, what the... With the, with, with, with the pride and all those things and the separation from God, I never want to forget, Brandon, what that almost cost me. Because you know what? I still, to this day, Adrian, I still get tempted to go back. Life's hard sometimes. Yeah. And we always think maybe that grass is greener on the other side, but I got a good testimony, and I'm used to saying it, Gary. And you know what that does? I don't have spiritual amnesia. I remember bright, crystal clear where I was at. And I'm not going back to that moment. I'm not going back to that lifestyle.
because the promised land is too good. Amen? Amen. So two things, guys. Stay plugged in. Stay plugged in, and that will keep you on course. And the second thing, get a good testimony. Remind yourself. You know what? If you have to, write it down. Write down. Just sit there and think today after this service. Write down. These are the things that, that, that it used to cost me. This is where God's taken me from. These are the things that have happened in my life because of those things. And the next time the devil tries to dress up your dysfunction, show him the hand. Show him that list. You, you want me to go back to that? You want me to go back to Egypt? Or you're going to feed me a little meat, but then you're going to start ripping me again. You start killing my kids. Start forcing me into slave labor. Take my opportunities away. No, sir. Everybody turn your neighbor and say, don't go back. I'm going to ask you, as Miss Tammy gets up and is ready to, to play. Guys, I'm just asking us all to, to please, this is a judgment. I'm, I'm not, I want to be clear, but I'm not looking into your life. We all need to look into our own lives. We need to look into our own lives and be honest about our dysfunction. I've got it too, guys. I've got things not only that I need to not go back to, but I'm, I'm still turning away from things as God's revealing them in my life that are, that are, that are keeping me bound. And, and you know, I want us to I want us to be honest with ourselves and realize, because a lot of times we we keep those things in our life, but then we complain about why am I not seeing a breakthrough? Why am I why why are things not getting better? Why why am I not seeing this this radical change? Man, I look at Tommy, look at the change in his life. Look what's going on with with Tony. Tony Tony's amazing. Why am I not seeing the kind of joy that's in Tony's life? You know. Guys, let me tell you something that God had to teach me. I have no right to complain about the water when I'm the one poisoning the well. Amen? Amen? When I'm allowing those things in my life, I can't get upset if it's making me sick. So let's be honest with ourselves and then give it to God and then turn away from it and don't go back. Amen?